Today we're talking about a guy named Jesse Duplantis. If you're unfamiliar with Jesse Duplantis, he's probably most famous for his, uh, what would you call it, his faux pas maybe with Kenneth Copeland. Let me just show you his, probably his most famous moment. Oh my God, where is it? It's, um, here it is, here it is, yeah. No, no, that's not the one. Hold on. That's why, brother Copeland, you. Brother Copeland. I mean, there's so many stupid ones, you know? It's like, it's so hard to figure out which stupid one they they got up to at any given moment. Okay, uh, Duplantis had a conversation with Kenneth Copeland. This is from 2015. Just listen for a second or two, and you'll 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 probably get what I'm talking about here. This is the one where he calls people in planes demons, effectively. Brother Copeland, I was flying home from a meeting, and I had come out of a glorious meeting. I had just finished. Me and Creflo Dollar were preaching. Well, Creflo Dollar is the biggest scam artist alive, practically. At a glorious meeting. So I was, for lack of a better way to say it, I was spiritually high. I said, people yeah. were saved, yeah. touched, and blessed. Got in the plane that God so graciously gave us, and we're flying home. At oh, my God. I was going home. The Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle that for me. I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? And when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane, and I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. <laughs> and he went back to flying. Yeah, because he knows he's flying some nutcase around probably. By the way, you may not be able to hear in my voice. Maybe you can, but I'm sick, and it's absolutely terrible. I, God, I feel awful. Sore throat, the whole nine yards, but we'll make it through. Anyway, keep keep listening. By the way, while we listen, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, there won't be any spoilers. I'm just going around fighting things and doing things and whatnots. Anyway, keep listening here. Lord, I don't think I was letting my faith stagnate. He said, so this is all I could ever do. I said, you want, you, you're you trying to tell me something. What the hell does that mean? That's all I could ever do. I don't understand. Just bizarre. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. No, sir. No way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay. No. Yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? Are you kidding? <laughs> so, God, so Kenneth Copeland is pointing out aptly that you couldn't possibly do that on an airliner. Like, you know, you're on an airliner, like a normal airplane, and you stand up and you start acting like a, I'm sorry, man, I gotta say it, like a fucking weirdo. And you're saying all kinds of weird shit to people. And he said, you couldn't have done that on a normal airplane, act like a fucking weirdo. No, you're right. You got me there. You couldn't have done that. You couldn't have been a weirdo on a normal airplane. Sure enough. Thank you, Kenneth, for your input on that. Do you that? can't do that. No, no. That, this, this is so... This is why we need our own airplanes, because we got to be able to act like f***ing weirdos. Totally. Important. And those of you that are, that are just now coming into these things, um, in, in the first place... Jesse and, 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 and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us. God, these people are shameless. They, the world is in such a shape. We can't get there without this. That's right. We've got to have this. We would have the mess that the airlines are in today. I would have to stop. I'm being very conservative. At least 75 to 80, more like 90 percent of what mm -hmm. we're doing because you can't get there can, from here. It, well, for what it's worth, I do want to point out, I did the math, and um, it would basically take, uh, what, what, like 127 years or something for what he spent on that stupid airplane that he got, $45 million airplane. For what that airplane is worth, he could have flown in first class for 127 years or something like that, straight. So I don't want to hear it, man. These people are just, they're so full of it all the time. 
Anyway, keep listening. It's impossible. So we we ha and and this was such a good illustration. I just mm -hmm. the, the Lord impressed me. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh, God. Glory we to can, God. We, it's true. We, it, we can act like weirdos as much as we want, and you know, the pilot is just going to turn around and look the other way when we act like weirdos. So that that checks out. Okay. It's when I was flying for Oral Roberts, the. Uh, Brother Deweese, my, my mm -hmm. boss on the airplane, he said, now, Kenneth, this is sanctuary. It protects the anointing on, on uh, uh, Brother, Brother Roberts. Roberts. And he said, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks. Because when he's on a meeting, he doesn't talk to anybody but God. Now, Oral used to fly airlines. Right. But it, even back mm -hmm. there then, man, mm -hmm. it, it got to the place where it was agitating his spirit, sure. people coming up to him. He right. had become famous, and they wanted him to pray for him. And Boy, what a... This guy is such a martyr, right? Oral Roberts has such a hard time, and it's agitating his spirit because people are, like, coming up and asking him to pray for him because they're having a hard time in life. Whew. Oral Roberts, what a... What a martyr, huh, this guy? Making just checking the chat, making sure everything's going well. Okay, you know Snoop Dogg um, is on Twitch, and he was muted for like two days straight and had no idea. <laughs> Poor Snoop. Uh, I hear he's actually pretty legit. Too legit to quit, if you will, as um, as MC Hammer would say. Too legit to quit. Anyway, uh, yeah, he's muted for like two days, and I don't want that to be me by accident. So I always like to check the chat, make sure things are going okay. Also, don't forget to check out my book, okay? I would really appreciate it. Um, I am going through the editing process myself with a, a close friend of mine because I feel like the editing that the, you know, the line editor I paid was not good or not worth what I paid. So I'm going through myself with another person who, like, really enjoys line editing and stuff. So... I'm going to, uh, yeah, it's almost done. It'll be done in the next, like, I don't know how long. Um, it'll be done in the next, like, two days, like, completely done. Like, the book will be ready to go. I'm going to have it formatted so all the paragraphs are nice and neat and everything. Just check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. Then I'm going to have copies printed. I'm going to have the ebook conversion done. All that stuff is going to be done in the next um, seven days, probably. I intend to have it out. In, well, I intend to have the book ready to go in the next seven days. I mean, I've been saying that for seven days. I'm just like, I'm doing everything I can, but getting a book out is like really hard, you know? It's a. Uh, a hard, arduous process that takes a long time is very difficult. So one day at a time, I absolutely cannot wait until the book is finally out. But yeah, check it out. OwenMorgan.com slash book. I would appreciate it. Anyway, sorry, that was uh, just an aside. Keep listening here. So Oral Roberts is complaining about people asking for prayer because they believe that he has some special line to God become famous and they want him to pray for them and right. all that. You, you, can't, you, you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get, in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. Yeah, because people are demons. Right. I mean, I don't know how else to take that. In, in all seriousness, that's what it sounds like he was saying, right? Getting a long tube full of demons. It sounds like he was saying that people are demons, doesn't it? A am I like misinterpreting this or, or what? Is this like unfair of me to like frame it this way? Like, I don't know. It seems pretty clear to me. Anyway, this dude is just like a straight up joke, just a straight up joke. Always has been. So the point here is that that is probably Jesse Duplantis's most famous moment. That moment when he was talking to Kenneth Copeland about how people who take normal airline flights, who are like on normal airplanes, 
they're basically like demons pretty much it's like if you get on an airplane it's like getting in a tube full of demons pretty much they're basically demons for the most part i mean seriously these people are so ridiculous they're like caricatures of themselves at this point honestly anyway that's exactly the and it, it's deadly and and it works on your heart it it works on your heart to be around people on airplanes. You got to be fucking kidding me with that. I'm sorry, man. It really does. So I, anyway, I, I wanted to make that clear so the devil. Yeah, that that's his explanation for why he needed to have not a normal little single engine plane that would get his crew and maybe himself and a few little things from A to B. No, a G6. You remember the that song like a G6? Doom 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 doom. People make rap songs about this plane that Kenneth Copeland had, okay? This is not just some random airplane. This thing is 45 million dollars. This gigantic expensive beautiful airplane that the dude could do I mean he literally like you could build an office in this airplane. Seriously, my God, but you know, he's the victim. He's such a victim. This guy is, you know, he and Jesse Duplantis, they're both victims in this whole thing. People are so mean to them. <laughs> my God, dude. Oh, I have so many fantastic clips of these people. Hold on. Let me find them. So um, he kind of got ambushed by uh, Inside Edition. They were asking him questions like, do you think that that's something that Jesus would do? Like, own an airplane? Do you think he would use $45 million to buy an airplane? Or do you think he'd use $45 million to feed the poor instead? By the way, Copeland is worth seven or eight hundred and fifty million dollars, almost a billionaire. Do you think Jesus would be a, a billionaire? Just. I don't even know, like, God, this is supposed to be about Jesse Duplantis, but dude, Kenneth Copeland is such a clown. It's it's hard to avoid. Here's one from, uh, when was this one from? God, I don't even remember when this one. Uh, uh, this is from maybe 2020 or something like that. 2019, maybe? Why, wow, brother Copeland, you, you own a $45 million airplane. Yeah, but you don't know what I paid for it. No. I don't give a shit what you paid for it, bro. You, owe a, you own a $45 million jet, okay? You could have paid half price and i wouldn't give a shit all right that's still 20 million dollars he is so disconnected from reality like he he has no idea does he he just doesn't know he's just completely clueless about the complaints or the questions or the whatevers we're near that but it's the same airplane <laughs> And Gloria designed a new interior for it. Sonny boy. And now he's like bragging about it. Are, dude, are you kidding me? This dude is just, God, I swear, I wanted to talk about, uh, what's his name, about Duplantis, and we're going to. I just, I cannot resist talking about the ridiculousness that is Kenneth Copeland sometimes. It's just so entertaining. <laughs> and a lot of you partners put us in it. The partners being anybody who donates to his ministry. But she didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he was talking about the inside edition. She didn't know that. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Uh, okay. We Just dead silent. This is awkward. You wrestle not with flesh and blood. 
but principalities and powers. Can and you explain? And now he's quoting the Bible. This is just getting weirder by the second. What you oh. meant by that, yes. that by that term then. Yes. Just, just explain, because it's really simple. You said you didn't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. What did you mean? The... Dude, I love it. Like, <laughs> she's just... She's asking him super simple, basic questions, and he can't answer shit because he does it like he has no idea. Oh, dude, I'm supposed to kill the Mind Flayer first? I didn't even notice. All right, I'll kill the Mind Flayer first. Well, let me ask you. Do you think that let people that fly commercial are demons? Just answer the damn question, Kenneth. Get a chance to talk, sweetheart. I'll explain this to you. Well, you're not answering. But it's a biblical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It doesn't have anything to do with people. Oh, yes, totally. Biblical, spiritual. All right. People. I love people. Jesus loves people. But people get pushed in alcohol. Do you think that's a good place for a preacher to be and prepare to go preach to a lot of people? When somebody in there is dragging some woman down an aisle, it made me so mad to see that on television. I wanted to punch the guy out. My Dude, what the hell is he even talking about right now? I am so lost. My God. And yeah, I just apparently I didn't kill the mind flayer first. Wow, this is a really hard challenge. I have to kill the mind flayer first? The other two are so weak, I kill them with like two hits. And this is like labeled easy. Okay. So I can't be doing that while I'm getting ready to preach. God, he, he's just shame. Okay, look, like I said, this isn't about Kenneth Copeland, all right? We're not here to talk about Kenneth Copeland as entertaining as it is. I love it to death, but we're here to talk about Jesse Duplantis, all right? So Kenneth Copeland, as it happens, he has this TV show or this uh, network called the Victory Network, right? Victory Channel. It's like Cartoon Network or E or Oxygen or like Fox or whatever. It's a TV network that people watch. And it's Kenneth Copeland Ministries and Kenneth Copeland all the time. Kenneth Copeland everything. Jesus everything. Well, there, there's this TV show on there called Flashpoint. People like... And that's what this is, Flashpoint. It's on Kenneth Copeland's TV show, or on his, um, like on his TV channel. So I want to listen to what these people have to say. It's absolutely going to be about, quote-unquote, illegals, you know, and the border and all that junk. So I want to listen to what they, what they have to say. If you're unfamiliar with what's happening at this moment in history, Biden just gave a, uh, what you, like a, a State of the Union speech. And these four guys right here are miffed. They are miffed, okay? On the left is Gene Bailey, far left. He's a televangelist and a pastor. Next to him, second from the left, is Hank Kuhneman. He is a supposed prophet of God, claims to prophesy on Trump's behalf, says God told him Trump will be the president or some other thing. Next to him, to the right, that's Jesse Duplantis. And then on the end, this is a guy named um, Suez, I think. I forget. Anyway, he's a pastor. I think he claims to be a prophet also. And he's, yeah, I don't know. He's a little lesser known than the others. But okay, let's see what these poor fools have to say about, um, you know, about Jesus and, and all that stuff. You know what? I'm not that guy that's always bagging on people. So I will let Greg Locke say it for me. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. I feel that that applies to these people, too. I, I, I mean, I don't want to uh, make assumptions about them. I've lived for the Lord my whole life, and I was dumb as a box of rocks and didn't know it. I don't want to make assumptions about anybody, about anything, but, you know, they said it, so... Again, I'm not the guy that's always bagging on people. Strike and 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 strike. As you can tell, I got a soundboard. I, I just added this one too. This is Candace Taylor. Everywhere I go, every store, you buy a globe. There's globes everywhere. Every movie, every TV show, news media. Why? <laughs> oh, I why? I love it to death, dude. I love everything about it. Anyway, so yeah, you might hear some of those sound effects as we go. 
Um, you might also hear some other ones like. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, all right. Let's listen to the the Flashpoint crew talk about how great Trump is and how Trump is the Trump, 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 Trump. And it was fantastic. And Kenneth Copeland, the best. And he's a prophet and he knows what he's talking about. All right, let's listen. Glad you're with us tonight. Listen, are you ready? Sit down. I'm ready. Down, buckle your seatbelt, because listen, you're going to have a, we've got a great program. Luckily, I'm not in a car. Lined up for you. Let me show you who's with me just to get things started. Uh, from the great state of, where are you at? Nebraska. That's right. Uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, <laughs> Jesse Duplantis, yes, and our good friend Nebraska. Tony Suarez. Uh, thank you. Suarez. That was. I thought it was Suez for some reason. No, Tony Suarez. Okay, interesting. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We're got, let's get right into it. I, I want to talk about the State of the Union. Before I, I forgot to say this, special thank you to Lance Wall now for stepping in and hosting Thursday night's show. He did a great job, and uh, and then he joined me at the place I was, So, uh, which was kind of funny. But anyway, thank you, Lance, for all you did to help us with Flashpoint. All right, so... As you know, there was a State of the Union address. Look at some of the, we're gonna show you a couple of reactions to what the media had to say about Joe Biden. Watch. For a speech about a comeback. Okay, th so for the record, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, State of the Union. I didn't watch it. I don't really care that much. I feel like it's kind of the type of thing that like older people watch mostly. But I will say this. Um, the State of the Union seemed to have very positive reviews from everybody that talked about it. It was a really, like, everything was positive. Everybody was positive about it. Everybody really liked it. So, um, yeah, take that for what you will. Back, he shouldn't seem very happy about it, did he? He seemed angry. There was plenty of stumbling and slurring of words and all the rest of it that we've come to associate with him and taken as a sign of his senility and his advancing age and, and the effect that it has on a person. So I don't think he got out from under that at all. And I'm not sure that a person sitting at home tonight looking at the guy would think he was anything other than an angry old man. Angry old An angry old man. Well, I'll tell you what Biden proved by doing the State of the Union. He proved that... He's capable of holding a conversation. He's capable of having energy and everything else. There's a an accusation going around that Biden is just like out of it all the time and he's dumb and he, you know, has handlers do everything for him and he can barely speak and so on and so forth. I don't believe that for a second anymore um, because you know, I, I've watched Biden speak for like extended periods of time, and I, I, I'm comfortable saying that like Biden knows what he's doing b by and large, and he's perfectly capable of speaking at this point. So, anyway. Oh man, that's Britt Hume. All right, let's go over to Tucker Carlson, and let me just show you this short clip of what he started in his reaction. Watch. Dude, I'm gonna have to restart this. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna give this a, sh a shot. That was quite an experience watching that. Oh, my God. Tucker Carlson is shameless. He is shamelessly a Russian. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? He, he's shamelessly a Russian. Um, uh, God, what's the word? Like, he'll do anything for Russia. He will do anything to claim that, like, Russia is the best and the biggest and the strongest and the smartest. It's it's just gross at this point, honestly. It's just like, why? Why are you like this, Tucker? You know, you think of Joe Biden as a doddering old man, a guy who... Yeah, why do you think about him like that? He's very clearly not, as evidenced, if by nothing else, than by the State of the Union. Can't remember when his son died or when he served as vice president. And of course, that's exactly who he is. No, apparent, as it turns out, it's not. It's on display every day. But Joe Biden is also a cruel and vicious demagogue, a man who has no problem at all denouncing his fellow Americans or putting his political opponents in prison, as he has done. And that he hasn't done any of that. He hasn't denounced fellow Americans or any of that other garbage. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. That was all on display tonight. That was possibly the darkest, most un-American speech ever given by an American president. All right. 
Wow, that's a little over the top, but okay, I'm, I'm listening. So uh, a lot of reactions uh, on both sides to State of the Union address and what we were seeing there from Joe Biden. Now listen, people like to jump on this age bandwagon. Age has got nothing to do with it. There's a lot of people older than him that are sharp and mentally acute. So this is not an age, uh, an age issue. However, it is a definitely a medical issue that we have, a comprehension issue. It's really not. I mean, there's no reason to believe that Joe Biden has any trouble with comprehension or with anything. He went out there on stage, the like uh, that the State of the Union, whenever it was, and he did a fine job. He spoke. He, you know, there weren't really any hiccups. He does have a stutter. He's had a stutter since he was a kid, and he has struggled with it since then for a long, long time. It's been very difficult. And you, you know, props to the guy for managing to get over this stutter. That's like truly impressive. And holy Christ, dude, I almost killed that guy. Anyway, uh, Biden is not like some doddering old man or whatever. Like, he's really just fine. I have no idea what these guys are talking about. It's all just political theater intended to make you think that Biden is, like, out of his mind and he has no idea what's going on. Not that it really matters to me. I would vote for a stick if it were willing to put you know, Democrats in positions of authority, like if it were willing to put a Democratic like Surgeon General in and stuff. Uh, the shuffling and everything, uh, you understand that's really the issue. But let me uh, let me talk to you about, let me show you this tweet. Uh, Stephen Miller says, they're not adequate words for this level of repugnancy. Americans built America, not illegal aliens and not murderous migrants. Jesse DePlantis, you... Oh, that's right. Okay, I remember. So I did see a couple of clips from the State of the Union. I'm not sure if I should fight Bahamut or not. Um, he's the next one in line, but you know what? I think I'm going to. And then we give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, I have not found all of the Bahamut uh, things to weaken him, so we'll, g we'll give it a try. I'm probably entirely too weak for this. What's her name? Marjorie Taylor Greene. She showed up to this, uh, like, to this State of the Union wearing some stupid shirt that said something. I don't. What? What did it say? It said somebody's name. I don't remember now. And it was just like an embarrassment. Of course, it was an embarrassment. She she embarrassed herself. She made a fool of herself. She's not supposed to. This is supposed to be an apolitical event. People supposed to be able to come together on both sides of the aisle, no matter who they are or where they're from or what. And they're supposed to be able to listen to the State of the Union address. But apparently Marjorie Taylor Greene can't even do that. So she wore this sh shirt that said something like, say her name. And it was the name of a woman who had been killed by somebody who was undocumented. And she, of course, yelled out in the middle of the, uh, what do you call it, in the middle of the speech, again, anybody surprised by that? Yelled out in the middle of the speech, like she did last time, and, you know, it was just some political nonsense, as she did last time, and uh, it was something about the woman who had lost her family. Now, I'm very sorry that that woman lost her family. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's I, I don't like that at all. I don't ever like to hear that somebody like lost their family member or that somebody is suffering or whatever. I don't like that. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is shamelessly using this woman, or this, this person who is suffering, who lost somebody to an undocumented immigrant, She's shamelessly using her as like a political pawn to get something out of or to get what she wants, basically. And it's just disgusting. Seriously, truly, deeply disgusting what she's doing. Anyway, she yelled out, say her name. And Biden said the girl's name like nobody's afraid of saying the girl's name. Yes, we're very sorry that that, that happened to her. And Biden said. Yes, she was killed by an illegal. But do you know how many 
legals kill people? The point was, to frame it the way that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was, yes, she was killed by somebody who was undocumented, but do you know that undocumented people have a lower rate, or, yeah, they have a lower rate of crime than documented people. That was the ultimate point that Biden was trying to make. Um I feel like illegal is used as a slur a lot, particularly by Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and people of her ilk. And it's just like, it's kind of disgusting and shameless, but, you know, I, I don't think there's anything that offends me. Like, literally nothing offends me. Because I've heard some truly heinous shit in my day. Like, okay, I grew up in West Virginia, I've heard some heinous shit, and and I've even heard it said to some really some innocent people that it shouldn't have been said to. Nothing offends me. Okay, these people, a Flashpoint, a Jesse Duplantis, a Kenneth Copeland, these people don't offend me. I'm not like offended by them. I just think they're scumbags. Is all. I mean, if you don't want to be, like, viewed as a scumbag by everybody from here to Texas, then don't act like one, you know? That's the way I see it. Anyway, the point is, Biden said the word illegal. You know, there are illegals in the, uh, or an illegal killed this girl's, or killed this girl, basically. But legals kill more people. That was the ultimate point. I don't really have a problem with it personally. Um, some of the Democrats did. So, of course, the Republicans are like zeroing in on it and pointing out that he used the word illegal. Oh, my God. Oh, how messed up is that? Oh, you know, th this whole point and we'll get into what he when he actually called somebody illegals. Uh, the, the truth is here. The border really overlays. It's becoming a bigger issue, a bigger issue in all of America because it affects so many parts of, of our life. Your comment. Well, I'll tell you this. That was not a State of the Union address, in my opinion. That was a campaign speech. And let me just say this. Okay, well, when a president is in power, I don't, like, that's just how the State of the Union goes, you know, for better or worse. It's a bully pulpit that they have access to, and they're going to use it. Um, Trump did the exact same thing when he thought he could get away with it. He used the State of the Union as a method of improving his chances of winning the following election. I mean, that's first time in politics. That's how it works, bro. You know, I think they shot him up with some speed because, you know, before I was born again, I, I took speed to, to, so you could not, not, not walk out real fast and all those kind of things. You did what before you were born again? Is this guy admitting to like doing coke? And we know that and we've seen too many, too many films of him stumbling and things of that nature. Do you think maybe just maybe? You watching a completely unedited beginning to end hour long or two hour long speech and watching the guy speak like actually watching him speak beginning to end that hasn't been edited by Fox News and watching him speak coherently and clearly. Do you think maybe that could be a sign that all of the other clips that you've seen that have been like cobbled together? and uh, clipped together and smashed to look like he's a fumbling fool, do you think maybe that could be an indication that those clips are fake? This guy is not thinking that deeply. No, it has to be that he was given speed. Yeah, he was given speed. I find it interesting also that he calls it speed because, uh, you know, there are different types of speed. Like, what, what speed are you even talking about? Talking about meth? You're talking about coke? What? My parents were also in the drug world for a while before joining Jehovah's Witnesses, and they called it speed, too. That's weird, right? I think speed is just, like, of a certain generation. But anyway, okay. 
go on. So you think Biden is taking speed instead of accepting the fact that you could just be like lied to about all of these videos that you see. You have to assume that th there's something else going on. OK, go on. But, you know, I heard someone say when you're angry like that, that is a kind of a, a senility kind of situation there. But it was not. And, you know, but I just looked at it and smiled. And, you know, I, I, what I don't understand is why don't the family do something to help this man? You see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt the man. But, I mean, that was, that was the worst thing I ever saw and because it was not a State of the Union address. He was just trying to say he was strong and, and things of that nature. And, you know, and you can be an old man. No, I mean, he talked about the State of the Union. State of the Union, when a president is trying to get reelected, is always pretty po political. And yeah, you can complain about that if you want, and I think it's a valid complaint to have. But literally every single president going all the way back to Washington probably did that exact thing. They always used the bully pulpit, the State of the Union, to, I mean, that's the point, to prove that they're doing a good job, right? State of the Union address is to prove that you're doing a good job, that, you, that you've done things to improve the world or whatever, to improve the United States. That's the idea here. So, yeah, I, like, I don't want to hear it. And in holler, and you can be a young man in holler, see? But when you can't, but what do you... By the way, check out my book, guys, please. I would really appreciate it. Next steps, have it formatted to look like a book. I mean, right now, it's there's not very much formatting. And I have somebody I'm looking to work with on that. Um, have it formatted like an ebook, and have the cover art done and then have copies printed and we're, we're done, baby. I want to have it out and in people's hands in the next four weeks. I want it in people's hands. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to send out ebooks to the people who order on owamorgan.com slash book just so that they can read it if they want until it gets in their hands. Like when I finish doing the cover art and I finish doing the, you know, formatting and, and all the other junk, I'm thinking I'm going to send an ebook format out to the people who made the purchase until they get their copy. So anyway, yeah, check it out. owenmorgan.com slash book. I would appreciate it very much. All right, let's continue listening to these nutter butters of epic proportions. Be an old man and holler, and you can be a young man and holler. See, but when you can't, but what are you saying? And we could see the stumbling and the different things that are. Uh, okay, you can be an old man and holler and a young man and holler. But what are you saying? So is he saying that Biden wasn't making any sense or what like what what's his point here I don't understand he's like wandering aimlessly in this conversation I'm so lost that are happening of course if you look at the other side is that he's come back he's come back to what see they don't tell you what he's come back to see and so I I, I don't consider that a state of the union address whatsoever at all and the border I, I mean if it's a speech given by the president to explain what he's done to improve the things going on in the country, then that's a state of the union. Like, what? I, I don't consider that a state of the union address whatsoever at all. And the border, I mean, we are a nation of immigrants, and actually it slipped out right. These people are illegal. That's Just right. that simple. I mean, you know. Yeah, Biden used a term that, you know, he probably shouldn't have used illegal, that was unbecoming but he was meeting them on their field he's trying to make a point by saying what he said yes she was killed by an illegal but how many legals kill people you know there was like there there was more context to it i don't think that there's any justification in being upset over what he said but that's that's just me you know um i don't know you know, but they don't want real words. Undone. You guys tell me what you think. Was it justified for Biden to say what he did to make the point that he made? Was it wrong? Should he have not said it?
document it, you know, no, right. and different things of that. Nature. And I understand where they're going. That's not the issue. But I want to tell it. Dude, what the hell is this guy even talking about right now? I'm so lost. Is he eventually going to get to a point or what? Like, what the hell is happening right now? That's Just right. that simple. I mean, you know, you know, but they don't want real words undocumented, you know, no, right. and different things of that. Nature. And I understand where they're going. That's not the issue. But I want to tell everybody that's watching, the American people are not stupid. I mean, we, may, we you may have been born at night, but you weren't born last night. Oh, my God. And that's the whole key to that. And, you know, if people just do it the right way, I, America will invite people and things of that nature. But you know, if you do it the right way, then you'll be invited. Is that so? Really? Is that why I'm constantly hearing people, you know, uh, from like uh, Flashpoint, like Flashpoint fans talking mad shit about Mexicans nonstop? Because you do it the right way and they like you all of a sudden. Now, these people are completely full of it. And they know they're full of it. You know what was happening by this border? It's the same thing that happened when Fidel Castro took over Cuba. He, what did he send to Miami? He emptied out all his jails. He sent all the gangsters. Okay, this is just complete nonsense. Like, all of this is nonsense. This is... um. BS that has been perpetuated by Donald Trump. The, the, it's been claimed by Donald Trump over and over and over again. Trump says that they're not sending their best. They're sending the people that are in their jails and all of that. Like it's uh, some kind of uh, an invasion or something. No, that's not happening. There's no invasion taking place. Do you know that at the border, there is actually an, an opening. There's a hole at the border. And uh, people may not be aware of this. Do you know why that hole is there? Why there's like, uh, why it's open for people to walk through? Do you, do you know why there, you know, it's open for people to walk through like that? It's open because it's a UN requirement for people to be allowed to pass through, like refugees, to pass to a refugee center to request asylum status. You must be allowed to request asylum status if you're a refugee. And what are these people doing? These, you know, people complaining about illegals, quote unquote, screaming, close the border, close the border, close the border. Well, by definition, asylum seekers are legal. 100% legal. They're doing it the legal way by going through and doing everything they're supposed to exactly as they're supposed to crossing over and get, you know, um, trying to make their way to a UN refugee center and being stopped by what's his name by uh, the governor of Texas by, uh, you know, through a number of means, National Guard troops are preventing them from doing so. Uh, he put razor wire in the Rio Grande River to cut people to ribbons if they tried to come through, which, by the way, happened. A bunch of people died because they were trying to get to America. I mean, it's just shameless and sad what these people are willing to do over ridiculous political nonsense man there's no crisis at the border there is no crisis at the border you know the crisis i'll tell you what the crisis is the crisis is the fact that we're not giving people the opportunity to get here faster i want to get crazy number of immigration judges assigned right now i want to get like I don't know, 10,000 immigration judges assigned to work immigration cases on the border and open that, that humanitarian corridor all the way, allow people in, allow them to make their way to the refugee center so that they can apply for, for asylum status and a judge can oversee the case. That's what I want. That's the crisis, so we don't have that. You know, these people are just a joke. 
they've been doing this when i say they i mean jesse duplantis specifically and flashpoint and kenneth copeland he's been doing this since the very beginning like since uh shit let's see hell every election i don't know if you guys remember this if you've been paying attention to politics for a while or not there's a guy named robert jeffress Robert Jeffress is an evangelical thought leader and very well known in the movement. Knows Donald Trump, has been shouted out by Donald Trump, um, been retweeted by him. Very well known person. And Lou Dobbs, of course, was, you know, he's very well connected too. And this is from 20, wait, when is this? This is 2018. Li this is literally. A week before the election took place in 2018, okay? A week before the election took place. Let's see what they were talking about. They claim there's a caravan of illegals coming over the border. They're on their way from South America. They're coming. We got to do something. I want to ask you about it. Governor John Kasich saying uh, that that caravan, God intended that that caravan uh, be allowed to cross our border. Uh okay, John Kasich said that I, he's a Republican governor. What the hell are you talking about? When did John Kasich say that God wants a caravan of people to <laughs> like, what the hell? I'm so lost. Okay, go on. I'm paraphrasing him. I mean, but. Oh, you're paraphrasing, are you? Okay. Could have fooled me. Did, does God want that? No, look, God is the one who established borders. He is not a open borders kind of guy. Uh, really? God's not an open borders kind of guy, you say? Huh. Okay. Look at Acts 17. God created the idea of nations, and to have nations, you have to have a border. And look, Lou, I got to be with the president today in the Oval Office, and by the way, he sends his greetings to the great Lou Dobbs, but I've been with him on many occasions. I've heard him agonize over the plight of the dreamers and those who are in need, but he has said to me and he has said to this nation, I have a responsibility to protect this nation, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect this nation. So the point is, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing with this mushroom thing. The point is that they freaked out about the migrant caravan coming. There are terrorists in there. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, John Hagee, another televangelist, he talked about the migrant caravan from 2018. Uh, God, I don't even know where that clip is, but I do have it. It's been a while. If you don't know Hagee, he's really well known in the, um, in the, uh, like, you know, the televangelist scene. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't find the clip of Hagee talking about the migrant <laughs> caravan, but the point is that every single election, every single one, Republicans are out here talking about illegals, illegal this, illegal that. Oh, my God. They don't shut up about it. I get so sick of hearing about it, dude. <sighs> Truthfully, we should be let it, We should be opening the floodgates. Immigration is phenomenally good for an economy. Oh, my God. It's so good for an economy. You know, Russia offered women like $10,000 or something, the equivalent of 10 grand. To have children, every kid they have, they get $10,000 for that kid. You know why? Because the more people there are in an economy, the better the economy performs. Now, what do you think would happen if we opened the floodgates and allowed immigrants to come in? As many as want to come in, they make their way straight to the refugee center or, or straight to the, you know, the at whatever, the government center and a, an immigration judge oversees, are they good candidates? Have they had any crimes committed? Are they from a war-torn area? So on and so forth. They determine if they should stay or not. They allow the vast majority of them in. And just like that, suddenly, our economy gets a massive boom. You know the only downside? Brown people. There are brown people. And and you know what else? Those brown people, they might they may outnumber us. Scary, huh? Oh my god. Imagine that. 
These people are the biggest joke on planet Earth. The sad part is that people believe it. It's insane. And all the different things. People have forgotten about that. See what I'm saying? And that's what's happening now. All these people, they just, we're just, we, we don't have to keep them in prison. Anymore. Just send them to America because they can come in and just cross the border. But America's going to pay for this. And I mean, pay for it big because um, these people do not like us. See, they just want us to pay them, what is it, $1,000 or $1,400 a month and a $1,000 credit card and all that kind of stuff. Dude, what the hell is this guy even talking about right now? I, I'm, I'm like so lost. And, and things of that nature, but they're also going to hurt people. And yeah. we're already seeing that. And I think True. it's time for all of us to stand up and say, excuse me. I say what it is. You know, black is black, white is white, brown is brown, red, yellow, whatever. Just say it. And when that girl was killed. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene is talking about. Like some girl lost her life. I'm sorry. That's really, really sad. I'm so sorry to hear that, really. Um, but to politicize it, turn it into this big thing where, you know, every migrant is to blame. Everybody who has ever been involved in migrating to the United States to any degree, she's there to blame for what this migrant did to this person. That's ridiculous. That is a that is using somebody's tragedy in an absolutely disgusting way. And I, I just cannot. I can't abide by that. It's just gross, honestly. It's too much. I can't. I personally believe that was because of that policy. It was. You know, and when you can't remember her name. Wait, what what? Oh, that that girl that died and you can't remember her name. I'm very sorry, but it's disgusting to me that people are using her tragedy as a political issue. That's just gross, bro. My God, what's your problem here? You're supposed to be the... Biden did remember that girl's name, FYI. What's he talking about when you don't remember her name? What are you talking about? He remembered her name. He said her name. Riley something, I think. I keep thinking it's Riley Gaines, but it's just a political issue run by Marjorie Taylor Greene in an effort to hurt Joe Biden more. It's just shameless garbage. And I can't believe that that girl's family is like even allowing it. I can't believe that they're allowing her name on Marjorie Taylor Greene's lips. It's so disgusting what she's doing, but okay. Presidency of the United States. And we know that he's not, that he's being controlled. You know, it's the puppet. He's being controlled. Wow. Tall claim. Okay. But on the strings. See, who is holding the strings for this man? See, and we all know that. But, you know, we talk a lot about it, but nobody ever does anything about it. And the way to do that, and I guess I'm a populist, is you get 74 million people in the streets. Yep. When you get them in the streets and you're willing to look at the devil and spit and not walk away, I'm telling you, things will change. Dude, what is he? So he's saying we need to start like a full blown war, basically. Is that what he's saying? Like, get people out there in the streets to to physically fight. Am I reading this correctly? It, I think so. They will change indeed, and there's precedence there. Uh, let me go to you, Tony Suarez, to weigh in on the the border. Is the border really? You agree with Jesse? Is the border what's causing all this issue? Oh my God, dude! Do you agree with blah blah blah? Literally everybody agrees with literally everybody else on this show, okay? Oh, my God, these people. I'm dumb in a box of rocks in a lot of areas. This is just ridiculous, bro, for real. The, the, the border is the worst it's ever been in my lifetime. It's literally not. Um, there, you know what? I guess I could say this. Uh, there were, there were a, um, what do you call it, like a, a record number of crossings of border crossings recently that doesn't mean that it, like you know there's like a war happening or whatever other nonsense like please come back to reality with everybody else you guys seriously need help and what i talked to a lot you know i was raised in first generation immigrant churches in chicago uh what we knew of the border what the issue was 30 years ago, and I would actually say even 10 years ago, 
is no longer the issue today. Uh do you think these people believe it? Do you think they believe what they're saying right now? Or do you think that they're just like completely full of shit? Do you think that they're just running like a political scheme to try to like get Biden to look bad or whatever? Do you think that's what they're up to? It's so hard to know for sure exactly what they're doing. Uh, you, people used to make jokes about, you know, coming over, working agriculture, picking fruits and vegetables in California, being deported, and don't worry, I'll be back tomorrow. That's not the case anymore. Uh, okay. That people made jokes about that? People will be back tomorrow? Okay. Go on. There are terrorists. There are drug trafficking, uh, drug traffickers, human trafficking taking place like never before. Uh, I suppose statistically that might be true. And I'm of the belief, and again, I'm the son of an immigrant who came legally, mind you, from Colombia. I'm of the of the opinion. Dude, if people are coming over the border and going to the refugee center, they're coming legally. That is a legal um what do you call it like a, a legal uh not transaction but a, a legal process that they're doing a hundred percent legal for these people to come over the border and request asylum but okay keep living in your little fantasy land i suppose that we have to completely close the border i don't know if that's for two days two months or two years but we have to close the border. Honestly, this is just a political issue. Nothing more, nothing less. And it is actually hurting America. It is hurting us to prevent people from coming in, to decrease the number of immigrants coming into the United States. That's damaging the U.S. These people are willing to hurt the United States in an effort to hurt Joe Biden, basically. Anybody surprised by that? Uh, right before we came live, I sent Gene a picture. We're in the middle of a building renovation. Well, last week, someone accidentally, something happened. We lost 80,000 gallons of water by the time the water company came here. You know what they had to do to find the issue? They had to turn, they had to go out to the main water valve and turn all the water off, and then we could solve the problem. So yeah, there's 30 million illegally undocumented people in this country right now you hear a lot okay i don't even know if that's true what he just said elite what 30 million undocumented immigrants is that is that true 30 million illegally undocumented people in this country right now you hear a lot of people talking about immigration reform and what to do with these people we can't even address that issue until someone no we're gonna have to address the issue yeah there are people living here now we need to Give them a path to citizenship. That's the thing. We want to give them a path to citizenship. There is no path to citizenship for these people. Full amnesty for all immigrants in the country right now. Uh, by the way, most immigrants, I don't... Wait, no, that's not right. I, I, it's most drugs come over the border by plane. Is that what it is? I don't remember. Anyway... Um, a border wall would not solve anything, basically. And we have to have that humanitarian corridor anyway. Like, these people are just such jokes. Willing to go to the border and close it completely and say, now that no one else is entering, now we can do something. And now, and then someone else asked me about uh, President Trump's comments about the, uh, using the military to round up people that are here illegally. That it, oh my God, dude, that's an insane recommendation that is an insane thing to say and I, I think they thought that they were asking me a trick question you know that they were going to trip me up with that i said absolutely use the military to round up every terrorist every uh, member of of the mexican mafia cartel that's here round up the violent uh element that's amongst us and then and only then after you've completely shut down the border after you have removed this terrorist element that is in our like do i even need to point out the fact that this guy doesn't seem to be separating terrorists from normal people who came over the border seeking amnesty because they came from a war-torn area and had no food and they're they're like suffering and by the way everybody talks about women and children and all this stuff what about the men men too 
Yes, men are of fighting age. A lot of the time, the, the men are supposed to go down with the ship. Fine. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. Great. But people are suffering. People. Whoever it happens to be. People are suffering. It's unacceptable. And they're not terrorists. Get a grip, people. People.